Hey, we're here to talk about the cost of living in Afton Oaks. If that's what you're here for, go ahead and stick around because we're going to be getting after it right now. Hey everybody, this is Drew Mims. And I am Carrie Fletcher, and together we're Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Hey, I know it's cheesy, but it just makes it easy to remember. Look, this channel is all about living in Houston, Texas. The good, the bad, the pros, the cons, the cost of living, anything and everything you want to know. So look, if that's what you're in, uh, if that's what you're looking into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and that way you're notified every time we put out a new video. And look, whenever you and your family are ready to move here to Houston, go ahead and give us a call, send us an email, send us a text message. Heck, you can even send us a note via Pony Express. Any which way you want to reach us, we've got your back when moving here to Houston. So, cost of living, after notes. Let's get after it. Let's do it. So, a little history, or a little, little bit about Afton Oaks, where it is. It's a, a upscale community. It's actually next door to River Oaks. Mm -hmm. um, really nice. Um, the lots are not as, tend to not be as large maybe as River Oaks, but they're pretty, I would say the average lot size is probably 9,000 square feet. So you, you've got large. a substantial, yeah. substantial lot side um, for inside the loop. Not many neighborhoods in the inner loop have lots as large as River Oaks. That's true. Um, most of the original homes, the older homes are, are ranch style, so they tend to be one story um, with detached garages. Of course, now they're going in and, and tearing down and, and building new homes and they tend to be, you know, have attached garages and be much larger and obviously they're, they're going vertical right. to get that square footage in. Mm -hmm. So a little bit different than back in the day when they, you know, originally built the community, um, which I don't think I have the year that they... Well, if they were ranch style homes, like then 50s. it had to be, yeah, it was, it was like the 50s. 50, 1950s. So there are about 525 homes in Afton Oaks. Um, it is a deed restricted community hmm. and it sits just inside the loop and um, it's sort of nestled and we'll, we'll have the map yeah, up we'll for you to see. Yeah, we'll put in that map. Yeah, there's, um, you've got 610 West and then you've got uh, 59 and it's just nestled right, right in that little corner. It's very close to River Oaks as we said. Um, other neighborhoods that are close by would include Oak Estates, um, Royden Oaks, um, you've got Lynn Park just to the east, um, West University to the southeast, and you've got Bel Air directly to the south. Oh. Um, it's, and well, gosh, you've got the Galleria is right there, and then Tanglewood um, just outside of the loop. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, again, you're, you're super close to all of the, the shopping districts. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Highland Village right next door because that's on Westheimer. And you've got a lot of, um, you know, anchor stores such as Anthropology, Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, um, gosh, Banana Republic, James Avery, which is a, a jewelry store. Um, anyway, you've got lots of shopping um, right there. And also, doesn't Afton Oaks, it sort of, uh, just on the other side of the railroad tracks, you've got the, um, is that Greenway Plaza area? And Right. A, so you're close to Greenway Plaza, which is good for um, commute. And, and we're going to do another video about um, the pros, pros and, and cons, cons that will cover more about all of the amenities in the neighborhood. But we just wanted to give you... Uh, general idea a general of idea of the area. So mm -hmm. again, your easy commute to downtown, Greenway Plaza, Galleria. If you're going to do um, a reverse commute, you're super close to both 610 and 59, and I-10 is just a short jaunt. So if you're going to be commuting to the Energy Corridor, um, it's it's super close. Mm -hmm. So again, very convenient neighborhood. It's beautiful. It's got a lot of old, very mature trees that are almost have a canopy like feeling and so it's it's really you know beautiful driving through the neighborhood mm -hmm. um you've got on the north well nearby on richmond not on the north side but on richmond avenue you've got a number of long running restaurants um you've got luling barbecue mm. um or city luling silly luling city, city. market 
<laughs> which has great barbecue. Um, there's actually a, a little town called Luling, mm -hmm. and um, the original meat market is there. Mm -hmm. So now they have one in the city, and it's actually really good. And it's been there, I think, since 1981. And then you've got Nielsen's Delicatessen. It's been there since 1952, so it's been around a long time. Uh, what else? You've got Bayou City Seafood and Pasta, and then, of course, Raging Cajun. Mm -hmm which like during crawfish, crawfish season is a very popular place to go. And mm -hmm. that's been there since 1974. Mm -hmm. So you've got, again, when we say long running, you know, mm -hmm. they've been there a long time. Okay, so we are in Afton Oaks. Uh, we just crossed over the railroad tracks right behind me, just off of uh, Richmond here. And I wanted to take a, uh, take a chance. Hey, I wanted to take a chance and uh, do a quick shout out to the Raging Cajun and also the Louisiana, the LA bar, Louisiana bar. We talked about this it's a great place, especially when uh, crawfish is in season. Wonderful spot to come and hang out here in the heart of Afton Oaks. The Civic Club there is very active and um, which is great and the, it's, it is a, you know, central or integral part of, of really maintaining that community. Um, I think they even do things like uh, the upkeep of the common areas, as well as arranging additional services like security, trash pickup, um, and of course monitoring the deed restrictions, which is what will help keep your property values. And up. they've actually got their own website, uh, and we'll send a, that put a link, link down in the uh, description of this video so you can check it out it's good to live in a community where you've got a lot of civic involvement and people care so uh, uh, tell me and if i'm putting you on the spot uh sorry about this but i'm not i know i'd like to do it but if it's deed restricted why are there and i'm not going to describe it as there's so many but you are seeing some newer homes being built up going vertical rather than staying with these single story or even double story uh, homes? Well, I'm sure that those new homes are being built within the parameters of what mm -hmm. those deed restrictions are. And I don't think that there are any deed restrictions about building up. Now, those are typically not, you know, three, four story homes are typically um, two story homes. Although there are some townhome projects that are three stories mm -hmm. that are sort of on the edge closer to that 610 west side and so um you know but i think the majority of the neighborhood is is more single or, or two-story homes okay so the exception not the rule all right so let's get down to the actual cost of living which is the whole point of our video <laughs> we like to get off track sometimes hey we're just trying to give you a, a little feel because if we just threw some numbers out there about afton oaks you'd be like oh, well what's the reference what's the point well why you know, is it so much more affordable than River Oaks, which is just a little bit further north? Or why is it so much more expensive than, you know, Rice Military, which is still within the inner loop? I will say this one just little caveat or one, I think, bonus point is that Afton Oaks is definitely a more walkable neighborhood in terms of being able to walk to restaurants, shops, that kind of thing versus River Oaks. Mm -hmm. There are a few places, but River Oaks is, is more spread out than Afton Oaks. Yeah. So, okay, overall cost of living. So again, we're gonna use 100 as the national average and um, we're gonna compare Afton Oaks to the state of Texas and then to the national average. So overall. Overall, it's, it's got, I, I don't know the exact numbers because she did all the research on this one, but it's gonna be higher just because of the housing. I mean, when you look at Houston yeah. in general, uh, is like an 80 something it's got to be higher. So I'm going to say it's it's 140 something, 150 something. 148. 148. Which Texas is 93.9, so we'll round up and say 94 okay. to 100. So it's it's substantially more expensive to than the not more expensive than the national average. However, if you're moving from a, you know, a market like California, um, you know, it's probably going to be a, a pretty lateral move except for that you're going to get a lot more space you're yeah. going to get more square footage on your lot size and you're going to get more so more green space and more square footage on the actual house for the same money that you would spend in in san jose la 
And the point that I always make is, I mean, you, you're Afton Oaks is here near downtown in the center of everything, great affluent community, and it's only the cost of living index is 144, and you're talking about Houston is 148. The, one, okay, 148. <laughs> It's the third largest, or fourth largest, soon to be the third largest metropolitan area in the United States. That's pretty amazing to only come in at a 148, 144. Agreed. I totally agree. Okay, so groceries. Let's talk about food. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna say that it's gonna be, uh, Houston overall, I know, is slightly more affordable, but Houston's so large that's taking in some of the suburbs. Because it's so close into town, Generally, I'm going to say it's higher than the average. It's slightly. It's nominal. 108. 108. 108.4. Whereas the state of Texas is 93.7. So, mm -hmm. you know. And that's got to be driven by the cost of the, the rent, right? It, the prices are going to be a little yeah. bit higher because... Well, the land, you yeah, know. Land. I mean, it's just that 8% difference is, is pretty small. And I would be willing to bet that most people are probably spending more than that just on Instacart delivery. Yeah. So anyway, pretty small. All right. So let's talk about healthcare. Uh, so healthcare, I know this one. Healthcare is very affordable in Houston and it's very affordable no matter where you are in Houston. You're going to be coming in at about a 92.4 ish, 92 something. Mm -hmm. And that's driven by the med center. Yep. A lot of amazing doctors, a lot of amazing hospitals, and just state-of-the-art um, leading technology. You know, one of the largest, I think, research cities as well for up-and-coming medical. Yeah, I mean, things. so anytime you've got, and it's not just affordable, but it's high quality. You've got people mm -hmm. coming in from not only anywhere in the state of Texas but anywhere in this region and also anywhere in the world all over the u.s all over the world um you know fly in for md yeah. anderson for cancer treatment or fly in uh to Texas baylor children's baylor so the the medical um care here is i think hard to surpass and yeah. especially for for the cost i mean that 92.4 percent compared to the national average. I think if, if you have health issues, it's a really good place to be. And the climate's really good also, mm -hmm. I think for a lot of what ails a lot of people. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. You won't have a heart attack shoveling snow. You might have a heart attack. <laughs> might eating all, eating all the good food or heat stroke, but you won't have a heart attack shoveling snow, I'll tell you that much. That is very true. <laughs> all right, so housing, which I think is what most people probably yeah. want to know about. Um, is substantially higher. Uh, I'm going to guess idea? it's uh, 200. 253.7. Ooh, okay, that's off a little bit. State of Texas is 84.3 yeah. compared to the national average. So um, a little bit more expensive, mm -hmm. you know, but again, depends on where you're coming from and what you're comparing it to. So um, again, I think the people that are going to be buying in Afton Oaks would already be coming, you know, Mm -hmm. spending that money somewhere else and it's going to go a lot further here than probably most other markets mm -hmm. so as, as far as affordability and i know you may not have done all of this research but just off of the back of the envelope afton oaks is definitely going to be more affordable than river oaks for sure it's going to be and tell me it's definitely going to be i think more affordable than like west u west university yes and hampton or southampton place right mm -hmm. but it's probably going to be more expensive in housing than say the heights so river oaks um is more exclusive mm -hmm. and larger lots. it's also more <clears throat> towards the middle of the inner loop so you've and you're surrounded by buffalo bayou so you have sort of a lot of green space so there's no traffic coming in from the north side at all mm -hmm. at all you're lying by the bayou um, and memorial park and so it's just totally green on one side and then so you're you have a buffer you're not going to hear freeway noise um it's just going to be generally a quieter mm -hmm. neighborhood now afton oaks is close to two freeways and mm -hmm. you've got railroad tracks that go through and so it's just going to be a little bit noisier there's just from a location perspective it's not as ideal as river oaks but again you're not going to be paying river oaks prices to live in right. afton oaks it's just they're two different 
communities. Right. And Afton Oaks, in my opinion, is a great, um, more affordable option if you still want to be inside the loop. Um, it's beautiful and you can get a large lot. And if I think for people who like to walk to restaurants and shops, it's, it's really good for that. Mm -hmm. So the median home cost, you think it's over a million or under? It's going to be under a million. I would, I would guess, but so it's nine, six, 963,000, 963,750 dollars. But I will tell you that to get into that neighborhood for under that price point, you're really looking at a teardown. Yeah, that's I was fixing to say that's it's closer to land value. Right. Um, you can get a really beautifully remodeled home that's been totally updated for 1.6 million, but like to get a brand new house, new construction, it's going to be closer to two million and up. Yeah, I, you know, whenever I was saying that it was going to be just under a million, I was taking into account that because it was established in the 1950s, you still have a lot of homes there that are that are that tear down or that where you buy it that needs to be completely gutted and updated. And so that would dra drag the median price. But you're right, getting a brand new or getting something renovated is going to be yeah. 1.5 to There are million. some really um, lovely homes <clears throat> that have been fully updated and renovated that you know, um, some people really have a love for those ranch style homes and mm -hmm. so worth looking into. But you've got, there's a little bit, you know, for everybody. What's well, also nice about the ranch homes uh, in that area and uh, you know, they have a tendency to be very flat and right along. Uh, that is an area that is not known and is not prone to flooding. There's no flood right. zones, not even a 500 year flood zone in that uh, Which is area. huge. <clears throat> and actually should be part of our cost of living <laughs> topics um, because we'll, we'll cover some more of that in the to, pros and cons. We recommend that everybody that lives in Houston get flood insurance just because Houston is prone to flooding. Mm -hmm. it, this neighborhood is not in a flood zone and so getting we'll cut flood, in the map. So yeah. cut in the getting map flood insurance is very affordable and it's just for peace of mind we we tell all of our clients to get flood insurance, yes. irregardless of whether you're in a flood zone or not. Right. Because um, those change all it's the time. Just, it, it, yes. Better to be safe than sorry, yeah. and it's super affordable. All right, back to actual numbers. So, um, utilities, yeah. pretty, pretty close. Sort of like healthcare. You're going to save a little bit. Yeah. 96.4%. Um, Texas is 99.2, so it's on par with the national average. We do have deregulation here in the state of Texas, which means that um, they broke up the m monopoly of what, power Mabel generation. And, yeah. yeah, so you... It used to be TXU. Yeah, you can choose. So there's a website called powertochoose.org and you can go and choose your um, electricity provider and you can pick from what type of energy you're getting, whether it's um, from renewable, like wind, solar, that sort of thing. Um, if you want a fixed rate contract, if you want an adjustable rate, if you want it for one to three months, if you want it for a year, two years, three years, um, be sure to look at all of what the fees are, you know, the base price, not just the price per kilowatt, um, cancellation fees, that sort of thing. When we moved, we, we just um, moved in July okay. and we were able to just take our contract with us and, and move it to the next location. No problem. So <clears throat> we'll send a, we'll put a link down in the description for the power to choose.org. But if you come to Houston or if you come to anywhere in Texas, you will be inundated with this advertisement, that advertisement for all these different bells all and whistles. All trying to seduce you. All trying to, well, and make it confusing. So this power to choose.org is it's gold. You need to be able to go in and, it's, it's in and a, sort through it. It's in a spreadsheet, sort of. I mean, not an actual spreadsheet, but that a similar format to where it's super easy to to read and figure out and find what you're looking for. Thank so, you so enough said on utilities. I'm yeah. cutting you off. Okay, you're cutting, cutting me off. Transportation. Transportation is going to be uh, pretty affordable. Uh, I know that it's going to be relatively the same as the rest of Houston, so it's going to be slightly above the Texas average. Mm hmm. 105. I'm sorry, the U.S. average. Yeah. Texas is 103, and, and Afton Oaks is 105. 
No. So again, we've talked about this in other videos. Um, in it's car insurance is is tends to be higher here than in other markets. Mm -hmm. um, but the cost of, of gas, oil Fuel. is is lower than most places. So mm -hmm. kind of evens out a little bit. Now Afton Oaks, as well as like River Oaks, they have pretty good public transportation systems running through there. They've got several bus stops and. Uh, running in and out. Houston's not known for its public transportation. True. If, you're, if you're moving to Houston, I would not move here thinking you're going to rely on public transportation. But Afton Oaks has better public transportation than than any of the burbs or even uh, a lot of the True. other neighborhoods. True. And the, the reason the reason for that is because you've got Westheimer, Richmond. You have some of the major roads that go in and out, and so. Um, it's going to be easy to get to places like the Galleria. And the Galleria has a whole new bus system for commuters mm -hmm. that um, is <clears throat> really convenient. And that's a whole nother video. Yeah, whole nother video. A whole nother thing. Miscellaneous overall, uh, well, we talked about overall, but just miscellaneous items, it's at 100.4% compared yeah, to the cool. U.S. Texas is 96.4. So overall, um, I think Afton Oaks is a very affordable place to live. So one of the things we've covered in some of the other uh, affordabilities is those key things like uh, taxes. So all of this cost of living doesn't take into account the fact that the state of Texas has no state income tax, no state income tax. So all we that money that you that. would be spending on state on state income tax could be going to we do have property tax. Or, well, yeah. and we have property tax. So when you yeah. buy a home, you're going to be paying which, well, sometimes that hits people and they're a little bit shocked and it's a little bit upsetting and we have to remind them, hey, you don't have any state income tax. Most um, states are going to charge you a state income tax as well as property tax. Yeah. So. And so you're talking about a rate of about 2.4%. I know it varies a little bit, but in our loop, it's generally around 2.4%. To 2.5, yeah. Yeah, to 2.5 in there. So that's not... That's not crazy. No, and you know, you if it's your homestead, if it's, if it's your actual home that you're living in, you will get a homestead exemption that'll save you roughly 20%. So you have to be living in the home uh, as of January 1st of that tax year in order to get the homestead um, exemption benefit. Mm -hmm. There's also, if you're over 65, you can also get another um, over 65 exemption as well thank you so much for joining us on this video whenever you guys are ready to move here to houston texas be sure and give us a call send us that email send us that text message heck even if you want to you can send us a note via pony express <laughs> any which way that you uh that you want to reach us we've got your back when moving here to houston and like drew yeah. was telling me we're helping people every day we'd love every to help day you. and we'd love to help you thank you bye-bye till next time